Hey everybody, it's Romania Black, and um, yeah, I couldn't wait. <laughs> no, I I watched the first episode of Death Parade and was like, I'm so ready for the next episode already. So so here we are. But yeah, um, I this show is so crazy so far, and I really really like it. I love the premise. I like the idea of this limbo. I like Decim, who's like this bartender that's also like the game master. That's just kind of this neutral presence that's controlling like, all he does is we just have to play this game. And it's like Saw mixed with, <laughs> it's like Saw mixed with this like existential, like look into human hearts and like the darkness within them and being like, how do we determine who goes to heaven, who goes to hell? Like, is it just as absolute as a game and you're the winner or the loser and that determines it regardless of how your nature is? I, oh. And then we got introduced into these other characters, these two girls at the end, who we don't know much about, so I'm hoping we get more on them this episode. But man, I want to know about this world, about this, this, was it quantism, like this, this quantum dism, like this, this limbo that's there. I want to know more about the lore. I want to know, like, why is it a Russian roulette? What's the deal? It's like this hodgepodge of things. It's, it's a whole bunch of stuff, and I just want to know more about it, so... I watched the first episode the other night, and I could be watching other things tonight, but I was like, nope. <laughs> I want to watch Death Parade and just see what it's about. So we're on episode two, y'all, and I'm pretty darn excited. I, I hope you all are as well, because that first episode, that OP is a bop. I love it. I, I'm just ready to see what all we're going to get. So I've got my headphones. I am ready, set to go. Make sure they're the right ear because my, my ears don't hold headphones very well. And I'm still trying to figure out why the wireless ones are not working. So hopefully uh, when I get back from a trip and everything that I'm going on, I'll be able to uh, work with those and figure out what the deal is. But in the meantime, I'm excited, y'all. I hope you all are too. But we're not going to waste any more time. We are going to start Death Parade Episode 2. And we are going to do that here in 3, 2, 1. And let's, uh, let's do this, y'all. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> No, no, I am, I am in like Flynn now. I was like, oh, that episode was so freaking cool getting to see behind the scenes. And so we have Nona, who's an arbiter, who's been there for quite some time, I feel, uh, who has been there for quite some time, I feel. And then we have our nameless girl that doesn't really have um, a name. There's, um, uh, she's just, she's just popped into this plane of existence. We don't know where she's from. We don't know. She's not died, right? Or is she an arbiter who is like, is she in training, right? But but they said she had a contract of three months. So what's the deal? I like that this series, this series is building a lot of mystery. I love series with mysteries. And I'm really excited by that because I'm like, okay, we're building a mystery. We're building something's happening. We're learning about this world, this other plane of existence, this other dimension, like, like purgatory is a vast place, apparently. And this is just one facet of it. So fascinating, fascinating y'all. And we're meeting the other characters. We're getting, there's, there's a whole cavalcade of these arbiters. I, I'm really excited because I feel like this series is going to like expand the lore a little bit more each time. And we're going to learn a little bit more with each episode and figure out what this world's deal is. I'm really excited by that. And getting like this episode was like the Uno reverse card where we flip it around and see behind the scenes what was going on. And there was quite a bit in the last episode that all our boy Deckham, Decim or Deckham, uh, he was not letting on. And so we're finding out that there's a lot of unreliable narration in this story because he, supposedly our narrator of explaining events that happened, he kept things from the couple and then he revealed a little bit to the couple, but then he kept the fact that he'd known their memories all along. I, oh, 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 and then she has her own, Nona has her own little realm at the top floor. Oh, I'm like, is she, I don't think she's God. I don't think she's the God of the world. I think she's just the head arbiter. She's like the head angel, right? They give off a very angels vibe. Like they're angels 
and they give off this vibe of like, okay, uh, maybe maybe the black haired girl is like a brand new soul. Maybe she's a brand new soul and they're determining whether she gets to go and, and go to earth and become a, an inhabit a body or she's either going to go to earth and inhabit a body or she's going to be like thrust into the darkness and that's going to be it. Maybe that's it. I don't know. We need to go through this episode. Uh, again, I, I thought about Whiteboard Coon, but I'm not quite ready for it yet, right? But man, the animation in this episode, can we talk about it? Oh man, I love it. So, okay, this is at Nona's house, right? This is, this black haired girl appears at Nona's house, like in this little bush. Like she just shows up. There's like a little tree that's like a little table and then she has appeared there, like fully clothed, has a necklace, everything, and wakes up and she's just there. Yeah, there's like all the different, it almost looks like an elevator, right? But it looks up, it looks like a heavenly light. Like maybe, interesting. I wonder if like she wakes up and there's this big, okay, so Nona's on the top floor. I should have gotten my work here. <laughs> it's too late. But Nona's on the top floor, 90th floor, right? So I'm wondering if you see above, it almost looks like the shaft of an elevator, but it looks like a heavenly light coming down. So maybe God has put, maybe the God of this world has put the black haired woman here at Nona's residence being like, is she going to be an arbiter? Is she going to be a human? What are we going to do with her? Here's this new being. You figure out where her place is. Does she need to stay in the world with you all and work? Or does she need to go to Earth, like like to the human plane? Like, what do we do with her? Like, I feel like it almost seems like that's the case, maybe. And then Nona shows up saying good morning. And I like that she's instantly like, who are you? Like, I like, I, I really like the black haired lady. We don't know her name yet. I don't want to know it. We'll find it out. She doesn't seem like to have a name, but she has a little streak of white in her hair, which is interesting. But she's automatically like, suspect like she's the most genuine person in this show so far she's just kind of like taking it all in and she's very much the audience surrogate being like hi i why am i here and she says i'm nona and you yeah it's at the base of the house that she lives in seemingly there's a little tree that feels like a tie to creationism and like she's been created fully clothed in 2007 attire why not and she asks her name. She says, I'm... She can't think of a name. And then Nona says, it's all right. You don't have a name. Like, you were just created. You haven't... We haven't figured out what to call you yet. So, Nona. I am curious. I want to know, just out of curiosity, uh, Nona name meaning. Just something simple. Uh, Nona stems from the Latin nonus, meaning the ninth. Oh, one of the three personifications of destiny. Nona spun the thread of human fate on her spindle, deciding who would be born or reborn again. Oh, that's what it is. Okay, it's got this tie meaning Nona, uh, one of the Roman fates. Oh my gosh, okay. And she lives on the 90th floor, so that makes sense. Okay, okay. So she's one of the fates, right? Okay, interesting. I I like it. I like it. The ninth. So then out of curiosity, just typing in what decim means, it means the tenth. Okay, borrowed from Latin decima, tenth. And I'm not going to look up any more on that because that seems like it might lead into spoiler territory. So yeah, she's known as one of the fates, the ninth, and decim is the tenth. Okay. Ah, so he came after her. That makes sense. So yeah, the idea of these like these fates, these angels deciding through who gets to live and who gets to die, who gets to be reborn again and who doesn't. Interesting. Okay. Hmm. All right. So lots to think about in this, as my dog wants me to throw this toy. Lots to think about this. So she just basically did Nona create, was Nona sent this new creation to be like, is she going to be a fate like us? Or is she going to just cease to exist after this? What is her destiny going to be? You don't have a name. And then we have our funky OP, which I, I freaking love the OP. It's such a bop. It's great. I love it. Oh, we have on the death on the desk, we have the death billiards. We have the pool table. We have like tops. We have cards. We have bowling. We have uh, like jacks. We have skates, death skates. It's like Yuri on ice. <laughs> oh no, I don't want 
don't want Yuri and Yurio to, I don't want Yuri and Victor to end up here. No. Okay, and then she's holding the button. It looks like there's like Charlie Brown in the background. What the hell? And then this OP is like so like happy and it's, the tonal clash is hilarious. Because you have, like, like where Nona's playing Dance Dance Revolution, you have, like, the funeral pyre and the flowers next to this Dance Dance Revolution game. Like, the tone, it's very cynical, and I kind of find that hilarious. Like, I do like the sense of humor that this show already has. It's ridiculous. And then I, am I, is it weird that I'm shipping Decim and our unnamed girl already? Is it weird that I want her with her pure heart and absolute genuine faith in humanity to like be a, a foil to his like stone cold like tin man heart that deals in only logical absolutes? Is it weird that I'm shipping them already? I kind of already love her with him. But Nona seems like she's like, I don't know how this is going to go. Hmm. I'm so curious. Cause he, and what's funny about it is, is that Des Desim has like, the most blank, like, monotone expression. But it's like, I want this cold tin man to feel. I want that to happen by the end of this. For them to feel, for him to feel, and for her to, like, give him these emotions. Right? I need this. So, okay. And then let's get past, uh, Madhouse also does this series. Interesting. So, okay. And then you find yourself up. I'm looking at the lyrics of the song. You find yourself up on the big stage. And like her world is like crazy. Okay, but it shows her with the strings. I'm like, so does she end up dying? What ends up happening? I don't know. Don't know. But interesting. And then there's the two kids at the end. The two kids at the end, I'm so curious. They're, this series is setting up so much mystery that I'm like, okay, what do we do with this? So here's the thing. We have all these, we have all these people working here, but now Decim and Nona are the only ones that have the kaleidoscope eyes, right? So are they the only arbiters and these other people are just rando workers that have been tasked with also staying here and helping run things in the limbo purgatory land? Is that what this girl's going to end up doing? Are they all assistants like that are just being trials as well? We don't know. I, I love the spirited away vibes that the train gives, though. And she's just trying to figure out what, what's happening. And says, where are we going? And she says, the 15th floor. So, yeah, they're going down. They went from the 90th to the 15th. So, interesting. I wonder why Decim is specifically on the 15th floor. I'm assuming we'll find that out. Probably. <laughs> okay. So fascinated by the series already. I love this. But yeah, everything like everything has this like it's it's a blend of all different time periods and technology and landscapes. And again, it just looks like things from from the from our reality are transposed over there and just stick together stuck together because you have Nona's house, which looks like a home, but then there's like a Colosseum around it, right? And Stonehenge, and it's just like it's all this ancient stuff put together interesting but yeah and we cut back we have like thida this lotus blossom and there's like the the praying god there on it and she takes it inside okay and so they go back into the elevator there's an elevator here apparently and clavis i love clavis is the name of our teal haired guy with the funky hair he says sorry to keep you waiting now do we see his actual eyes I'll be careful in the future where to today. Decim's place. Like he has all the piercings and everything and all the multicolored hair, but do we see his eyes? I want to see if he had the crosses in his eyes like her and Decim did to know if Clavis is if Clavis is actually one of the uh the arbiters. Okay, I want to look up Clavis's name too. While whilst we're here, Clavis means a key or glossary serving as an aid to interpretation. Okay, so him being the one to run the elevator is kind of fun because he's like a key. Like he leads them to the certain floors. That makes sense. Okay. I like Clavis's character design. I wish we could see his eyes. Mm-hmm. And I just like, he just looks over and goes, hi. Like it's very, it was almost like kind of creepy the way he looked over to her and was like, hello. Like just very like he noticed that she was staring even though his eyes are closed. I'm like, what? And I love her eyes are so big. Now her eyes don't have the kaleidoscope in them either. They're just... 
random eyes. But she has that white streak in her hair, though. So I wondered if her hair was, like, going to keep turning white or what was going to happen to her. So we go to the 15th floor. I... I almost feel like des like who designed this random world? It feels like all over the place. And it doesn't feel like Nona style. Maybe Desim just looked at some things in the human world and was like, we'll just base it off this, I guess. It just looks so random and bizarre. And then we have, which again, now the chandelier and stuff looks like the jellyfish in the jar. And jellyfish are poisonous, but they're also like see-through, right? Like, maybe Decim is transparent. I, there's some symbolism there, right? I'm certain of it. But yeah, and so then he shows up. Welcome to Quinn Decim, the bartender. Mm hmm Okay, and we still don't know. She doesn't have a name. And this is where the deceased come. Okay. She says, you mean the dead. So it's funny how, it's curious, she has this knowledge. She's not totally dumb. She has knowledge. So, but I don't feel like she's dead. They said she doesn't have a name. If she was a deceased from the land of the, from the human world, she would have um, a name to her, right? But since she doesn't, they established that when you first die, you're in such shock that you lose your memories. But I wonder if they don't tell her name. If she is part of the living that's died, would they not tell her her, her name to like try not to invoke those memories? Or is she just some new creation that doesn't have a, a name or purpose yet? I don't know. It says there will be two deceased coming here. We're going to have them play a game with their lives at stake. And we just run through exactly what this is. We pass judgment on the deceased based on their life memories, as well as the extent of the humanity they display during all of this. So yeah, that part, knowing that they have had access to their memories this entire time, and they based the judgment on who went where based on what their memories were and who won and lost the game. What? What? And the thing of it was that Decim based his decision on the fact that she admitted at the end that she cheated. Like, so he may have very well have been intending to let Takashi go to the void and her live but then when she made that lie up at the end, he changed his mind. So, so all my stuff in the last episode might have been totally useless. So the loser of the game may not go to heaven. It was, it's based on multiple factors. It's not only based on who wins and loses, but that's just part of it. It's based on that combined with the memories determining whether they win or lose. Oh my gosh. So yeah, just because he lost... Losing doesn't mean that you were being self-sacrificial and you got to go to be reincarnated. He took pity on him because he thought she was a lying trollop. <laughs> and then this girl's like, well, no, she was clearly lying to save to save him the guilt of thinking he'd killed his own child. And Desim's like, did I mess up? <laughs> we're having the lives of the deceased. Their souls are in the balance of these arbiters who have no clue for sure what they're doing. Or at least Decim. Now, we don't know how old Decim is or how long he's been doing this, but Nona, she seems like she's been around the block a few times. And she, it's interesting. Okay. We are arbiters. And she's like, arbiters? She says, you look as like this comes as a surprise. And I like that she's just like, uh, yeah, I just showed up here. Before the disease. So I'm like, she says it sounds like she's surprised. So did, did Nona expect her to know what an arbiter was? Did she expect her to already know what it was? And she's wondering, was she an arbiter that's been reincarnated? Can that happen? Can arbiter, is that maybe what she is? She's an arbiter that for some reason died or was killed by one of the deceased there. And she, you know, gets reincarnated and comes back again as another arbiter or as an assistant. Hmm. The memories of our guests are compiled and sent to the arbiters. So, yeah. So, so, some of these people working in limbo compiles them. Yeah. She said, yes. It's kind of like hocus pocus. Like, it's magic. It just, it just, you know, gets put together for us. A nice little zip drive. And we just get to access it before they get here. You know. Like reviewing files before a, an interview. 
like a kaleidoscope of images. I like that she puts her hands in her little um, suspenders. That was really cute. And she's like, oh, don't you get it? And I like the girl's like, yeah, more or less. I, what what can you say to that, right? And she's like, am I? She And I hate that they don't answer her question. She's like, am I deceased? Am I an arbiter? What, what is my purpose here? And she says, wait a minute. And she says, Keen, we're ready. And says, sending memories. Okay, so someone's named Quinn. So Quinn's. There's someone named Quinn that compiles the memories, another person, and sends it to them. Okay, that they're like the, the broker of information of the dead. And then I like that it like makes their eyes twitch and they get the information on the deceased. Interesting. And it's like a wind-up doll that he gets it. Okay. She says, now the performance should go faster. Decim, if you would. Okay. So she's like, since we know all this information, we can just make, this won't take as long, right? Because we can already kind of determine what's going to happen. And she has the little brooch with the symbol of the place as well on her bow tie. I love her character design. Nona is fascinating because Nona feels like she's much older than she is. And she like has this secret kind of like power to her that's a little terrifying. And I'm like, okay, I'm interested. And Decim, who I thought was like this omnipotent presence, he's this innocent little puppy dog that's just like, I thought that I was doing right. Like, it seems like he doesn't know what he's doing. So what, what is happening? And then the girl's like, um, what is it that I do here? She's like, why am I here? She's like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I forgot to tell you. Mm -hmm. You're an assistant. And she's like, uh, okay. What does that entail? But we don't have time to ask that question. So the mannequin room. It's funny that the room that freaked Takashi out so much is just like literally the hobby room for Desim. So Desim's whole thing is that he puts together mannequins. That is his hobby. He, he puts together dolls. Okay, these dolls that are kind of like little lifeless husks, hot, uh, little shells. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, okay. Okay, so it's like art imitating life. Like Desim doesn't seem to have much of a personality to him or much of an identity. It seems like he's just he's just newly formed himself almost. And so the dolls are kind of like him trying to like, you know, figure out like what am I? What what who, what is my purpose in all of this, right? Am I just an arbiter? I like it. She's like, "Well, it's kind of a creepy hobby." And then she's like, "On the other side, they're going to be playing the game." I can't believe that we're seeing this entire episode over again from the other side. And that they were there the whole time watching this entire thing happen. Death reverse. Okay. And so they establish that the shock of dying makes everyone forget that they're dead. And that's why they don't immediately realize it. And she says, if they knew they were dead, why would they play a game with their lives at stake? And then the girl goes, well, the act of risking your life on a game itself seems kind of... And she's like, yes, normally they wouldn't. That's why we have to prompt them. So uh, this brings up so many questions. Like, why play these games in the first place? Is it is it because of, at the end where Desim talks about making mistakes, is the whole point of doing the games because Nona has realized that the Arbiters can make mistakes and she's like, this way, it's a way for us to kind of like weed out and pull out the true emotions of these individuals. And so they kind of do the work for us. Like they kind of make our jobs easy in determining who's the winner and who's the loser in actuality. Is that what she's suggesting? She's like, well, it sounds to me like no one was like, I got really tired of just judging souls left and right. So I decided that we'll make a game out of it and make this a little bit simpler to decide. Is what it seems like, right? Is what it seems. We make them think they might die if they don't play the game. That's the present situation. And so he's trying to intimidate them. Mm -hmm. She's like, so don't move. And that's how it goes. Yep. And then they play the game. And it was successful. And then I like that the girl goes, well, why would we go this far? Like, what's the point? It's necessary for their verdict. In our experience, 
the best way to create extreme conditions is to have people risk their lives over some contest. So it's it's for the verdict. She's like, we need to create an environment where an extreme condition will prompt the inside of someone's soul to be revealed. This is probably the most creative thing we could think of. And she's like, extreme conditions, the state of extreme tension that comes during the game, we have to create it, mentally speaking. And then she's like, okay, now we go to the next phase. And she's like, we can't judge people on their memories alone. So yeah, that, that's a good point. She's like, we can't judge them on their memories alone. Once they reveal as much as possible of the darkest depths of their soul, that's what helps us make the verdict. Because she's like, yeah, memory is something that everybody remembers things oftentimes in their own favor. So memories themselves are, can be an unreliable narrative. She's like, if we just rely on the memories... What if they're not true? What if that person is remembering something the way they want to remember it and it casually, because they don't, they, she's saying we're not telepathic. We can just look at the memories compiled for us like a videotape. But if those memories have been edited by that person to only reflect them in a certain way, she's like, that's not enough for us to make a verdict because then it's just, we're taking the word of someone versus the word of someone else. So we basically have to thrust them into this environment where they get so afraid it reveals the depths of their souls. And then we combine that with the footage and make a judgment call. Is what she's saying. The arbiters take it all in. That's when we first pass judgment. She's like, the darkest part of their souls. She's like, you guys were just playing darts, you know? And then the most primitive emotion people have is fear. Yes. That's what brings... She's saying we make them afraid and fear brings out people's true nature. And that's what's going to help us make our verdict. It's wild. This whole series is wild so far. And the fact that, like, they go sit in the theater and there's just mannequins set up like theater people, which is kind of creepy because it suggests that Decim doesn't have anybody with him in this world. It's just... Whatever he finds. She's like, oh, don't pay attention to the dummies wearing clothes. It's just Desim's hobby. He doesn't have anybody to talk to, which is why you're here. And so, yeah, she's like, the game involves pain. And that helps to stimulate, you know, their true, their true colors, right? The game is over. And I like the girl's like, this is kind of over the edge. And her bangle that she wears, her bangle has the symbol of the company on it. So that's interesting. I wonder if she originally had that or if Nona gave it to her. Hmm. And she's like, they could just miss. She's like, Desim told them about that, but will they actually just keep missing? Otherwise, somebody's going to win or lose. She's like, from where you're sitting, it seems like the easy thing to do would be just to miss all the darts and end the game. And it's kind of like, it's almost like calling out the audience saying, you probably were thinking that last episode. Why didn't you just miss all the darts and not have a score? But then she's like, somebody still has to win or lose. And I like the idea that she says that the girl calls out. She said, well, well, Desim never said anything about the winner goes to heaven or the loser goes to heaven. He never said anything about that. And Nona goes, yes, exactly. But people kind of fill in the gaps themselves when it's not specified sometimes. And they're making these assumptions not based on any actual evidence they'll start to think and no one wants to go down a dangerous path because it's scary and it's the unknown. And so, yeah, all, and I like that she says here, she's like, sure enough. And then the one girl, she asked what we were kind of wondering in the last episode, was it intentional they slipped and hit her? Was that real? And Nona says, all we can tell comes from the kaleidoscope of their memories. We can't read their minds. We can only guess what they're thinking. So yeah, that's why Destin was so surprised when she admitted her affair at the end. They're not telepathic. They can't predict what they're saying and thinking or what they're going to say and what they're thinking. They're just going off of what they know from their memories and that's it. Fascinating. So interesting. It just takes experience and observation to make a judgment. So yeah, so Nona is saying like, you know, I, I gather Nona's been around for a while and she's like, trust me, you get to know these things the more you're around them. And I guess she's trying to teach Desim the same thing, like use your observation and your experience to make the right judgment call, right? That's just how this goes. 
And there are many things, she's like, there are many things I don't know about with how the mind works. She's like, people are so interesting. It felt very Shinigami. It felt very much like Ryuk. Nona gives me like a Ryuk vibe where she's just like, she just seems kind of neutral or jaded or burnt out. Like she just doesn't, she doesn't care. Like the, the process, she knows the process and she just wants to keep it running smoothly. Right. But she's not really emotionally invested at all. Right. As to the way that they died, it seems like she tells the girl this to try to get her thinking about it. They died in an accident during their honeymoon. When Takashi was suspected, he suspected Machiko of being unfaithful. So really, I mean, he should have gone to the void based on that alone. But then she's the one that has the affair, right? And she says their memories are starting to come back. So yeah, so that whole thing, as the dark game was progressing, the memories were starting to come back. It's also interesting that you have Nona in side profile and then the girl and the mannequin. It's almost like the arbiter, the middle, and then something that's fake. I don't know if there's a meaning behind that. Stylistically, it looks interesting. But she says this game evokes their memories coming back. They get stimulated during the game and they start to remember. And we don't know what they'll remember, but the memories deal with their deaths. So that's just going to expedite the process of revealing like the depths of their soul. They'd forgotten them from the shock of dying, but it's all coming back. It's like, she's like, we basically blast Celine Dion and they start to remember. <laughs> We forcibly evoke them. She's like, we could just sit around for a couple days and let their memories slowly come back, but that's boring. So we're just going to forcibly make them remember things. What? Oh my God. Like, hmm. Yeah, and this girl's kind of like, uh, I don't know what to think about this. So we make them remember. I like that we go back to the game being ending and they're like, just everything's devolving now. And then Desim tells them about their deaths. People are sent to heaven or hell. And that's when she's like, heaven or hell? And Nona says, it's easy for people to picture that. So that's what we call them. But really the process is either their souls are reincarnated into another body or it goes into the depths of darkness and their souls lost forever. So basically that woman and her kid, bye, into the deep darkness. They are judged to determine the destination of their soul. That is the role of an arbiter. And so this is the tribunal of the soul. Oof. It's, it's heavy stuff, right? And so the girl, she kind of can see through. And I like that. I like that from where they're sitting, it's up in the stands and they can see down like it's a play, right? Like we're watching a play within a play. And she can see the girl look at the wedding ring and then real and then tell the story about the affair like she looks down at it and then tells the story right and she looks sad she doesn't look like somebody that's that's happy that she's telling him the truth she looks like she's doing this like she's sacrificing herself to try to make him feel better and not feel as guilty about losing their kid about being responsible for their child's death because yeah that whole part where she like lifts her head up in this crying that seemed like it was a giveaway that she was doing this to save him or at least to save him the guilt, right? And Desim, Desim at this point is kind of like, when his eyes widen, it's almost as if he had made a decision to let the man go to hell and then he changes his mind when she confesses. But the girl in the stands is like, no, she did that just to alleviate his guilt. And then I like that she's just looking and then he sent them away. And, and she's kind of sad by it because she almost feels like Dessa maybe made the bad decision. Like he made the wrong decision. Like you let him get reincarnated when she was doing it to save him out of love. And so that's when they like turn the corner and we back to the end of episode one. And then the girl asks, she says, can I ask a question or something I'd like you to tell me? And Dessa's just like, uh, okay, what? And so they take the darts off the dartboard. Miss Machiko had another man, in short. And she says, he's, and then I like that Nona says, well, you look like you're not convinced about the affair. And she's like, well, I'm sure it could have just been a one-time thing, couldn't it have? 
Couldn't that have been it? And I like that Decim's like, wait, what? <laughs> like, Decim, like, he either has two expressions. He's either stone cold, no emotion at all, or he looks devastated. There's, like, no in-between with him. There's no happiness. He either is, like, stone cold, monotone, no emotion, or he looks like the world is crumbling. And I want to give him the biggest hug, right? Because, yeah, we go back to this part from the last episode where she's had the affair. She doesn't look happy about it. She looks like she's utterly destroyed and she has her wedding ring on. Like it was right after they got married that she had this affair. So, and she said, okay, it was right after they got married. They're on their honeymoon. And she said she thought she was pregnant for 10 weeks. So there's, so it was Takashi's kid probably from where they had sex. And she just had the affair after they were married while she was already pregnant. Oh, and Decim's just kind of like, wait, why do you think that? Like, like, did I make a mistake? And she says, oh, well, it's just a hunch. Like, you guys, you make your decisions based off the evidence you have in front of you. But this is just based on what I know. And Nona's like, and? It was bothering her all this time. I think the baby inside of her was Takashi's. And so Decim's like, but she, I like the Decim, Decim doesn't understand how the human heart works. He doesn't understand like, like people lying about something like that. Cause he goes, well, she said it wasn't her kid though. Like, like he just take, he took that at face value. And she says, well, yeah, but she had a very, she was very sorrowful when she said that. I think it's clear that she was lying. And I just like that. He's just like lying. Like that was even on the table. Like she even had that option. Right? Why would there be any need for that? Like, at that point, they knew they were dead. And they knew that he... Because, yeah, Decim's like, well, but he lost the game. And they were both dead at this point and knew it. Why would she lie about something like that at this point? What would be the need? And she's like, I think she used her own child in order to save him. And he's like, used? What? To lessen his grief over the news that he'd killed his own child. Even if only a little bit. She's like, she's like, he felt he was so happy to be a dad. And then to think that, you know, that was, you know, she did it so that, you know, he wanted to be a father. And now they had their, this chance to have a family. And then they realized they were dead and that it was his fault. And so he was going to live with this guilt because he basically caused the death of, his, of himself, his wife, and his unborn child. She's like, well... I'll make him feel just a little bit less guilty by saying that it was an affair and this kid might not have been his. And then maybe he won't feel so bad. And Nona, Nona, like her eyes being like, mm -hmm, like she figured it out, even if it meant he would resent her. Because they're both dead. One was going to heaven, one was going to hell. At that point, what did it matter? And then Decim like slowly goes, oh, it was an act like like that hadn't even like he hadn't even been able to tell that. Right. So I'm curious how old Decim is. He doesn't seem like he's that old, especially in comparison to Nona. That's what it would mean. And then Decim, when he puts the darts down, he's like, well, that's incomprehensible. Like they were already dead. Like what? Why would she do that? And this girl's like, well, yeah, I think it was because they were dead. She did it. She knew that they were going to have judgment passed on him and tried to make him feel better. I I love the twist here. She knew they were about to go their separate ways and she wanted to respect her own feelings. She wanted it to end on her terms and wanted him, this person that she loved, to not feel so bad. And he's like, I don't understand her own feelings. And I, she's like, how do you not get this? Her fondness for him. And Desim doesn't understand what love is. He's like, oh fondness are you talking about love he's like i hadn't even thought about that and i like that she's just like dude you don't get this i have a feeling i'm gonna like their relationship because she is like all pathos and all emotion and he is like none of it so i'm like that ship dynamic i can get behind i'm like i'm excited to see these two together even if it's for a short time he says in that case and then he realizes He's like, if he hadn't gotten the wrong idea, the two of them could have been happy. They should have had a happy life. She's like, if he hadn't, if he hadn't misunderstood 
and let jealousy get the better of him, they could have had, they could have and should have had a happy life together. Like, if, if only he hadn't done so, she's like, things could have been differently. And that's when Nona gets a little bit like, that's, that's when Nona gets kind of tense when she says they should have had a happy life. And Nona's like, wait, what? And we're going to go back to that. And it's almost like she's like, if he hadn't, if those memories hadn't been the way that they were, they may not have died. And that's when Desim's like, could I have made a mistake? And he says, Ms. Nona. Like, he addresses her, like, as an adult, right? A in a very formal way. Ms. Nona. So, yeah, Desim, like, Desim's starting to think that he made a mistake. And this part, where she grabs the shoulder and yanks him down. And she's like, uh -huh. She's like, look. And grabs the tie and she's like, everyone makes mistakes. I love it. She's like, but then people's feelings often get expressed in random ways. You're an arbiter. Don't just brush them off. She's like, learn from this. Like their emotions sometimes come out randomly in ways we don't think about. So we have to be careful. And he says, he's sorry. She's like, don't forget. And then she leaves. Like, girl, Nona's kind of terrifying. And yes. And just for her to like reach down and grab Destin and like bring him down to her level and be like, get it right. Don't muck this up again. Oh my gosh. She's quite terrifying. And she says the usual. And he like, he does clench his fist though. Like, like he's upset that he did wrong. So there's emotions in there. There's emotions buried beneath the surface with our Tin Man. Because he's very, he's not happy that he messed up. So, I'm so intrigued. I'm so intrigued. I like Desim already. I'm so intrigued. Like, he's just thinking he might have done something wrong. I'm so excited to see more of this character. And then he makes, it looks like, like a grape juice, a grapefruit martini almost. And she's like, this is the usual. And she's like, oh yeah, they're good. And then the one girl says that they are. Okay. It's drinks and seriousness. Other than those, he has no saving graces. The drinks and seriousness. Hmm. Hmm. He's stony-faced and his hobby is building mannequins. And she's like, I know. We just, we had this all happen. And she's like, okay, I'll leave you to it. You can take it from here. You said I'm assistant, but what am I supposed to do? Well, just keep doing what you're doing. Hmm. She's like, you're supposed to help him with this task of choosing the, uh, choosing the fates of these people. Interesting. I wonder if he needs, I wonder if he's had assistance before. If he needs, if she feels he needs an assistant because he didn't get it right. Hmm. So the elevator has like five, five different sections and there's a six leafed, a six pronged leaf on each of them. And so then uh, Calvis asks, how did she do? Not bad, I'd say. And he's like, oh. She says, huh? He says, you, it's rare that you don't put them down. So, ah, so the assistants, right? How'd she, so, so maybe are there other arbiters? Are there other arbiters other than Decim? Like Decim means 10 and Nona means nine. Are there like eight other arbiters and they all have assistants? Or is this like one of the numerous assistants that Decim has had before? Hmm. And he says, usually you put them down and say bad things about them. Uh-huh. And then that's when she starts to think happy. And she thinks back to the memories of him. That was not just a simple misunderstanding. Uh-huh. That man was someone who could not trust others. Yeah, I would agree with that. There's no way he would have found happiness, is there? Ooh! So she's suggesting, she's like, that man, no matter what would have happened in his life, he was doomed to fail. He was not destined to find happiness. That wasn't a possibility. So is she suggesting it's a good thing that he died or that he needed to be reincarnated to? Or should he have gone to the void? Did Dessa make a mistake? 
Hmm. Hmm. Because, yeah, so, yeah, the girl seems to think that if he had just been a better person living, then they could have had a happy life. But Nona is kind of like taking the approach of, no, it was always going to be bad and he was going to ruin someone's life. So, but does she agree that he shouldn't have been reincarnated that Destin made a mistake? Uh, so much! So much in this, y'all. I'm just like, what? What is happening? And then we go to her realm that has all the columns. It looks like a coliseum. She's like, actually, I take that back. She has a way to go. It's like, she, she, I said she wasn't bad, but in reality, no. She's still got things to learn. Ooh! Nona is terrifying. And Calvis is like, uh -huh. okay. And of course, like, I look forward to working together. And she's like, as do I. Aw, and he apologizes. I have respect for people who live fulfilled lives. Ah. I was, it was an un, I was an unfit arbiter in this instant. In this instance. Ah, okay. So he thinks that, he thinks that he made a mistake and... He should not have made that call the way he did. And he's going to try to hopefully have her help him live up to better standards. Interesting. All right. She's like, oh, okay. Well, she says one other thing. I want another one of these. Uh-huh. And he's like, okay, I can do that. He's like, I can do that. And he takes, I love he takes the glass so carefully with both hands from her. Hmm. To make her another drink. Okay, so we have that, and then we have this awesome ED with the mannequins and the broken mannequins. The song's so good. So we have this after credit scene. We have this telephone. It has the symbol on it too. It has like angel wings coming out of it. Why not? And so then we have there's a book, right? And he says thank you very much. She's like I get it. The term is only for three months. So, so does that mean that the girl is only going to be there for three months? Interesting. Okay. Hmm. Huh. Chowat. I don't want, I don't know what Chowat means. Hmm. Okay. The story of Chowat. Hmm. I don't know what this is. Nope. Not going to look it up because of spoilers. So we'll just wait and see. We'll just wait and see what it is with Chowat. I don't want to be spoiled. Um, there wasn't a name meaning instantly online. So I'm just not going to look it up. I'm going to let it go. But she has like a really nice house with the, with the vines and everything. So yeah, that girl and the big tower in the center. So yeah, the girl with the black hair came from Nona's place. But why and to what purpose? Why three months? What's happening? <laughs> I I really liked the premise of the very first one. The first episode, I really liked the premise of it. But this episode got me hooked. This episode got me hooked. Now I'm hooked. Now I need to know more. I need to know more lore. I need to know more about Nona. And I love Decim already. Decim and this black haired girl, I love their dynamic already. I'm so ready for more. I, yeah, mm -hmm. very excited. So, ah! but uh, I'm curious to know your thoughts down below. Please no spoilers, but y'all, I can't wait to see what's going to happen next. So with that being said, I hope y'all have a wonderful week. Please stay safe. Take care. And yeah, I'll be back very soon with more Death Parade.